So right out of the blue, Apple has just released an update meant to fix the thermal throttling issues everyone's been seeing with the 2018 MacBook Pros. We just finished a bunch of before and after testing to see if they actually did fix the issues, so let's take a look at the results. I'd also like to mention that this fix is not only for the i9 MacBook Pro, but for all new MacBook Pros, including the 13-inch Touch Bar model. So let's start with that. Geekbench 4 CPU scores didn't really change, since the test doesn't fully utilize the CPU. But when switching over to Cinebench R15, a benchmark that pushes processors to their limits, we saw a much higher score of 703. Now let's stress test the CPU by running four consecutive tests back to back to see if it thermal throttles. Before installing the update, we got scores of 631, 632, 605, and 608 for an average of 619. The last two scores were lower than the first two, so that means it is suffering from some thermal throttling. While testing, we noticed clock speeds constantly spiked up and down without stopping. Also, whenever the temps would reach 100 degrees Celsius, the clock speed would drop down usually to around 2.4 GHz, causing temps to cool down around 91 degrees, before heating back up to 100 again. The lowest clock speed we saw throughout the stress test was 1.9 GHz, lower than the base clock speed. After the system heated up and stabilized, we saw consistent spikes in clock speed between 2.5 and 3.4 GHz, so we'll just have to call that our average clock speed. After the update, we got scores of 703, 669, 680, and 683, for an average of 684, substantially higher than our average score before the update. We also noticed that the spikes in clock speed are now completely gone. The lowest clock speed we saw was 3.0 GHz, much higher than before and much higher than the base clock speed. Also, there was a huge difference to how clock speeds reacted to temperatures. It still hit 100 degrees, but it would no longer clock itself down a huge amount. It would stay above 3.0 GHz no matter what. In a few seconds after starting the third and fourth runs, the temps no longer hit 100 degrees and actually started to slowly cool down and our scores were still much higher than before. The average clock speed sat at around 3.15 GHz, much higher than before. Next up, we tested Final Cut Pro 10 performance by exporting a 1 minute 4.5K Red Rod project with added effects. Before the update, it took 8 minutes and 30 seconds. Again, the clock speed spiked up and down and we saw a minimum clock speed of 1.99 GHz. The temps also spiked below 90 degrees many times. After the update, it took 7 minutes and 37 seconds, which is quite the improvement. The clock speed was steady and never dropped below 3.0 GHz. The temperatures were also very steady and only reached 100 degrees once before cooling down to as low as 92 degrees, all while keeping the clock speed above 3.0 GHz. So now we can clearly see that the 13-inch touch bar model was also affected by the now fixed thermal throttling bug. We're seeing faster performance in benchmarks and video editing with more reliable clock speeds. So now let's move on to the 15-inch MacBook Pro with the famed i9 6-core processor. But before we get into that, let's talk about the number one top-rated email marketing app for Mac, Direct Mail, where you can quickly and easily create and send great-looking email newsletters with in-depth reports that show you who's clicking, reading, and sharing them. Growing your mailing list is easy with custom subscribe forms for your website that automatically sync to direct mail. It integrates with over a thousand other apps and services, and it can even send email campaigns automatically. It's free to download and get started, and Apple Insider viewers get an exclusive offer by heading to directmailmac.com AI. Back to the test, there's practically no difference in Geekbench 4 CPU scores. In Cinebench R15, however, our first run pulled off a mass of 1,051 points, compared to a high of 945 before the update. Now let's go ahead and run our Cinebench R15 back-to-back -back stress test. Before installing the update, we got scores of 915, 877, 910, and 945, for an average of 912. Just like before, clock speed spiked up and down, mostly between 2.4 and 2.8 GHz. The lowest clock speed we saw was a shockingly low 1.93 GHz, and temps fluctuate between 92 and 100 degrees. After the update, we got scores of 1051, 978, 1006, and 1011, for an average of 1011, around 100 points higher than before the update. This is huge! The clock speeds were very smooth, and we never got below 3.0 GHz. 
The temps only hit 100 degrees shortly after starting each run before quickly cooling down. After the first run, the fans kicked into gear and temps stayed between 91 and 96 degrees. We're extremely happy to see clock speed finally stay above the rated base clock, and the temps are so much better than before, not to mention the massive boost in scores that we saw. Now for the Final Cut Pro exporting test, it finished in 2 minutes and 28 seconds, compared to 2 minutes and 24 seconds after the update. Practically no difference, which is surprising due to the improvements we saw in Cinebench R15. Interestingly, even after the update, we saw a clock speed as low as 2.5 GHz, now much lower than the base clock. We're not sure why they got that low again, because the temps reached as low as 88 degrees, leaving much more room for extra power. Overall, we're very happy to see the clock speeds have smoothed out, and the temps have decreased. We're very excited about the change in Cinebench R15 scores, but we didn't really see much of an improvement for video editing, but we think it'll make a much bigger difference if you export larger projects. For those of you wondering why there was such a huge difference in export times between the 13-inch Touch Bar model and the 15-inch i9, that's mostly due to the dedicated graphics in the 15-inch model. We'll be doing a lot more testing and comparisons very soon, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on those videos. This fix is for all 2018 MacBook Pros, so if you have the base 15-inch model, or you choose any other CPU option for either size MacBook Pro, you'll see similar results to what we saw in these tests. For those of you who just ordered a 2018 MacBook Pro, the first thing you'll need to do when you get it is head over to the App Store and manually install the update to make sure your MacBook Pro is running at its full potential. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next video.